What should we do? Uh, call the police. With continued supply chain shortages and other global issues impacting production, we may need to start looking a little harder for these 10 items that will soon be impossible to find at grocery stores. Ketchup. At the hot dog stand in the Denver train station, Heinz ketchup. The pandemic has also hit America's favorite condiment, the tiny ketchup packages that restaurants distribute for pickup, takeaway, and delivery orders are going extinct. Faster delivery and takeout trends over the past two years have caused a surge in ketchup packet consumption. Another reason for the shortfall is that restaurants are using the packets even when customers dine in, which is in line with recommendations from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Shortages have been affecting our most iconic brand Heinz. Supplies are running low at several restaurants such as Long John Silver's and Texas Roadhouse. No ketchup! No ketchup! Recently, Kraft Heinz acknowledged that it is trying to enhance supply, including adding manufacturing lines that would raise production by around 25 percent. They would potentially produce a total of over 12 billion packets each year. A cargo ship the size of a skyscraper blocking the Suez Canal may have contributed to clogging the worldwide supply chain. Will Kraft's targeted production investments at the start of the pandemic be enough to keep up? Mustard. Mustard is made from mustard seeds. Now, of course, you can't have a ketchup shortage without a mustard shortage as well. One of the most widely used condiments, mustard, is in peril because of pandemic shortages and harsh weather. Because of a lack of mustard seeds, patrons at neighborhood diners may soon be forced to eat their burgers without the notorious yellow condiment. The shortfall, which is being caused by a drought in Western Canada and floods in Western Europe, might affect different brands. The the expectation is that inventories for well-known brands may be disrupted, but consumers may still be able to get generic brands. Around the holidays, Morehouse Foods, a large supplier of mustard, noticed the writing on the wall. Yes, brace yourself. The Montreal company purchased metric tons of mustard seed, which it currently stores in massive bags. The firm produces popular yellow mustard brands, while higher-end Dijon mustard accounts for 80% of its output, and now both are becoming more expensive. They expect the shortage to end around November, which isn't exactly the best season for barbecuing, but it's better than nothing. Americans and Canadians may have to face the dilemma of not having anything to put on their hot dogs in the not-so-distant future as mustard and ketchup supplies dry up. Thankfully, chili dogs, Coney Island dogs, and other creative variants should keep hot dog lovers happy until their beloved mustard supplies are back in full squeeze. Eggs. Would you care for a cup of tea with your egg? Last year, after California and Massachusetts adopted cage-free rules, there were fears of an egg shortage. According to a poll conducted in 2021, the majority of the leading U.S. egg producers foresee supply difficulties in 2022. And that was before waves after waves of the pandemic quickly swept across the country. It added to the already stretched supply chain in the United States. The latest wave caused a meat and egg scarcity in the United States. On top of that, when more employees became ill, labor shortages in America intensified. Although the most recent wave has passed, the food supply system has yet to recover. As offers remain scarce and supplies shrink to a light to moderate level, wholesale prices for loose eggs keep rising to levels comparable to those seen during the early stages of the pandemic in April 2020. For now, it's just too expensive. Interest levels are moderate to high, and trade is moderate to vigorous, meaning that the future outlook for egg prices isn't looking too bright. 24-hour stores. We could have a midnight screening right here in the store. The pandemic put an end to all-night shopping. Consumers in western New York used to be able to buy everything from shoes to sushi at any time of day or night. However, this hasn't been the case for over the last two years. When the pandemic struck, shops like Walmart and Walgreens stopped operating 24 hours a day and began shutting their doors at night. Dollar General, Target, and Trader Joe's all cut back on their in-store hours. 
And even though limitations loosened and other issues were resolved, nighttime operations have yet to resume. Many merchants continue to operate on a limited schedule. Malls in many neighborhoods have the most shortened hours. Most malls, which have had trouble filling their stores, close at 7 p.m. on weekdays, while others close as early as 6 p.m. And they close early on weekends. Stores have been able to save money on running costs while balancing their budget thanks to shorter hours. The requirement for crowd management and the more labor-intensive restocking and cleaning operations as a result of the pandemic may have motivated the initial cuts. However, merchants have been able to manage with acute labor shortages, increased labor expenses, and slower in-store traffic by maintaining the decreased hours. Retailers have found it particularly challenging to hire due to the tight labor market. During the pandemic, employees were cautious to pursue customer-facing positions. When businesses closed during the pandemic, many former retail workers moved on to other sectors, while others migrated away as working conditions grew more stressful due to staffing shortages and food clients. Sriracha but what am I gonna do with my sriracha? Huifang Foods' ability to make several of its popular sauces, such as chili garlic, sambalo lek, and of course, sriracha, is being hampered by a shortage of chili peppers. Many cascading events have contributed to the shortage, including unanticipated crop failure during the spring chili harvest and supply chain concerns. Huifang Foods conveyed their wish for a prosperous autumn season and thanked their consumers for their patience and support during this trying period. Currently, owing to weather circumstances hurting the production of chili peppers, the planet will now face a more severe shortage of chili. The company imports chili peppers from Mexico, which, like parts of the western United States, is suffering from a drought. And orders for the affected sauces placed after April 19 will not arrive until September 6, after Labor Day. They want to close the shiracha plant. Prior to September, the company said that it will not be accepting any new orders. At least a handful of United States-based eateries have already been impacted. Because of the shortfall, many sushi and hibachi restaurants may no longer give complimentary sriracha at their tables and will restrict one spicy mayo to every two rolls. The global food supply has been vulnerable to shocks throughout the pandemic, which have only been exacerbated by record prices and the ongoing crisis in Ukraine. Meats. You buy enough meat, they'll give you anything. One of the most notable impacts of the pandemic on our lives has been unforeseen supply chain issues and food shortages. Effects of the virus plagued the entire planet as industries shut down and once smooth running industries hit snacks. Consumers stockpiled many common household items and other supplies in the early days of the pandemic, causing shortages. Retailers raced to keep stores supplied with disinfectant wipes, toilet paper, meat, dry goods, and other necessities. However, as time went on, supply chain concerns aggravated the dilemma, making some meals and basic products extremely difficult to come by, or far more costly than usual. It's just going to be way more expensive. When the school year swings back around and the holidays approach, we may anticipate some supply and food shortages to resurface. It's already begun in some regions, with parents complaining on social media about not being able to find their children's favorite snacks. Food shortages are also difficult to forecast. As a result, it's difficult to plan for. Meat is a huge commodity that has been affected by shortages, which are expected to remain for some time. Meat and poultry products will continue to be scarce this year, not because of a lack of cattle or poultry, but because processing factories are operating at less than full capacity. Dairy products. We're out of milk. Are you kidding me? The steady decline in the amount of milk produced by America's dairy cows is driving up the cost of everyday items like cheese, butter, and cream. Putting cream in your coffee or butter on your toast will cost you more money due to decreasing dairy output and increasing inflation. The amount of cream required to manufacture butter is scarcer in the East and Central United States. Domestic demand for dairy products has increased and has been hindered by a combination of adverse weather 
and a shortage of drivers to deliver commodities across the country. In the southeast area, including Florida, the average cost for a gallon of milk in December was $5.99, compared to $3.50 in 2020. I'm throwing this away. We ain't even got no milk. While milk costs increased, the amount of cream available to prepare culinary delights decreased. In comparison to 2020, ice cream supply was down 1.7%, and non-fat dry milk production was down 15% in 2021. Domestic demand for butter is increasing in retail, food service, and wholesale sectors, hence production facilities are limiting the amount of butter they produce. Seeds. Earth slash tomato seeds. Eh, those are more of a summer food. Seed shortages were widespread in both 2020 and 2021, and seed distributors are now forecasting another shortage this summer as well. Many seed catalogs and specialty stores have apologized for their low stocks. They claim that their various firms have been hit with unprecedented demand, and they just can't keep up with the market. If you've tried to buy anything recently, you've probably realized that several of your favorite lettuce, bean, and tomato varieties are no longer available. Available. They've all been snapped up. Yes, it's gone. They are all gone. Plants are consistently out of stock, and when you can find them, expect prices to be much higher. Regular clients are being advised by seed providers to acquire their seeds as soon as possible for the forthcoming growing season, and hobbyist planters will be paying a branch and a limb for their favorite plants this season. Odwalla Juices you're saying smoothies, right? Odwalla, a juice and smoothie brand owned by Coca-Cola, will soon completely stop production. The decision was reached given a fast-altering industry and despite every effort to maintain sustained production. This wasn't an easy decision for the company to make. It has been evaluating Odwalla's business for several years, and the decision to abandon the brand is unrelated to the pandemic. Smoothies aren't as popular among health-conscious customers as they once were. The revelation comes as food firms reduced their product selections during the pandemic in order to try and make their operations more effective and fulfill increased demand for their most popular foods. This spring, Coca-Cola proposed a similar strategy. I'll cut it off. They stated that they're focusing on increasing system efficiency by fiercely prioritizing to deliver on core items and critical brands. The less sophistication there is in the supply chain, the better the likelihood for success. Odwalla goods were transported to retail locations by a fleet of around 230 refrigerated vehicles, which is an illustration of how particular items can cause supply chain issues. Beer. I hate you! Get me a beer! Get me a beer! Get me a beer! Beer! Beer shortages might occur in the new year as a result of a labor strike. Workers who produce Heineken beer have been campaigning for better compensation and more accurate salaries. The popular beer brand's supply chains and warehouses are managed by GXO Logistics. Union organizers claim that at least 1,700 workers were underpaid when the firm switched to a new payment system. Because of the new structure, their salary and overtime labor have been uneven. GXO Logistics anticipates supplying beverages to 20,000 clubs, restaurants, and pubs by 2022. If their employees go on strike, beer availability will be severe severely hampered. The bulk of union workers have already endorsed strike preparations. This is about workers' rights! Workers' rights! Next month, they'll hold an official complete vote. Workers have no qualms about going on strike. Workers staged a walkout in August 2021 after being promised a 1.4% raise. After the employer adjusted the wage hike to 4%, the walkout was called off. Workers demanded at least a 3.9% raise raise to keep up with inflation. Thanks for sticking around till the end, so here are some more awesome videos for you to check out.